Edwards with Highway Marketing and today is project day and I'm going to take a Allen and Heath DX168 and do a few little custom things to get it ready for my gig next weekend. All right, so we're going to start with unboxing the DX168. Got cool little foam. It's well packed. Of course, I did open the box upside down, it seems. But that is the top. So the DX168 uh, are actually D-Live preamps that can be used on the D-Live mixers, or in my case, one of the SQ mixers. So it has 16 inputs and has eight outputs. And I'm gonna get this one ready to go in my near my uh, mixer in monitor world so I can get all my inputs uh, for wireless microphones and in-ear monitors. It has rubber feet on it, so you can lay it out as a stage uh, box as well. Has simply has a power uh, input, a mode for cascader redundant. Uh, this is great for those, especially with the D Live rigs with the uh, S Class, where you need a redundant communication. You would sw flip that switch over to redundant. I'm going to use it in cascade mode for the SQ. And we're simply going to have an in and out. And when you put it in a rack, and it looks all really good, the, connection, the connections are blocked from in the rack. So I'm going to show you a little, need a few little accessories and parts. And come right over here. I'll show you all the parts we're going to need for this little project, OK? OK, here we go. First thing we're going to need are the AB1608 RK19Xs. These are the rack ear kits, both for the AB1608 and the DX products as well, okay? The next thing is I have just a punch-out panel rack. This one works great. I will also use a PowerCon connector that I got uh, from my local music store. And then a cool little, this is the greatest thing ever. It is a uh, uh, EtherCon connector that I don't have to solder or terminate wires. Pro tip 373 in my series of videos. You need a star connection. It is not a Phillips head. This is a T20. So before you start putting in your, uh, your Phillips and start stripping things out, there you go. So I'm just gonna remove the old ones. Hey, there's another tip I have for everybody just to help save you some time and effort. When you're trying to um, put this on and you can't get the screws to line up, it's because um, it goes this way. Depending on how you align the screws, okay, it's going to put a rack space on the bottom. So you don't use the same screws that you just use. You're going to use these screw holes here. Okay, there you go. And use... Uh, you know, um, the bigger, there are two different parts here. There's one for the short side. And then a long side here to protect all these cables. You have Porter uh, cable hammer drill is not necessary, but makes things easy. Okay, almost the final assembly. Got me a nice little case here from Elite Core. Got a nice little inexpensive, but you know, simple uh, power strip that's got multi outlets in the back. I took the main power out, connected it to my PowerCon cable here. Just kind of bundled up the wires just a little bit. It's going to have this is going to be the plug for the power, the IEC. Uh, went ahead and uh, inserted this already. See how nice and easy that is. I have the labels of in and out up here. Okay, so now I'm getting ready to hook up the connections. Again, just to review, uh, I'm using this with an SQ, so I'm going to put this in a cascade mode. You can also do that with a D-Live, but if you have an S-Class product in the D-Live, you can put this on redundant 
where you have two wires making a redundant connection. In this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug into uh, A, and then it will cascade to a second unit. So I'll have a total of two 16.8s. And it's simply that easy. I just got a, a little three foot um, 5E um, connection here. And I'll do this one right here. planned it. Pretty easy install. Even a sound man can do it. There we go. Got my rack screws. finished product.